Talk up it, your mic's not working. Is your mic working? You might not be talking into it or have it closer. Do I need to just hold it? Just hold it. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? I'm a urology student at St. Lima and the president of the Earth Science Club. That's what I'm So before we talk about weather, we need to know the difference between weather and climate, and it gets confused a lot. But weather is day to day changes in the atmosphere. Like today, it's rainy and cloudy, or the climate is weather in a span of at least 30 years. For example, Ohio has a temperate climate, which means that we get all four seasons. So here I have a list of all of the weather hazards that we are going to be going over today. Um, can I have somebody answer which one is the most dangerous out of Not hurricanes. That's okay. Purple shirt. Okay. Heat wave. That is correct. Heat waves are actually the most dangerous out of any of these weather hazards and affects the most people every year in the United States. It is close. It will go heat waves, then cold, then hurricanes and tornadoes. Can I ask if anyone knows which one of these costs the most, like, damage?
and heat waves, they can definitely cause sunburns, something I experience often in this paleo diet. And then the next type is very appropriate to talk about today, being all types of winter storms. Um, the first type are ice storms, which is also known as a blaze event or a silver storm. And they're characterized by a large amount of freezing rain, and they have to have an accumulation of a quarter inch of ice on exposed surfaces. And these are some pictures of some ice storms from last year in Buffalo. Now this next thing is cool, and I learned it in a earth science class that I had last semester. And these are called ice jams. They're long cold spells that cause rivers and lakes to freeze. It causes a rise in the water level, and when it falls, the ice breaks into large chunks. It acts as a natural occurring dam. And here, I'm going to play a little video of it for you guys. And this video is from Buffalo, New York, coming off of Lake Erie. The next thing we're going to talk about is lake effect snow, which is produced during cooler atmospheric conditions when a cold air mass moves over warmer lake water, like Lake Erie or Lake Michigan. Um, the lower layer of air by the lake is heated, causing water vapor to rise, and then it condenses to create large amounts of snow on the leeward shores, which means the direction the wind is going. So, here in northwestern Ohio, we can get lake effect snow from both Lake Erie and Lake Michigan, depending on which way the wind patterns are. And then the last wizard's winter storm we're going to talk about are blizzards, which contain a large amount of snow or blowing snow. You do not need both for it to be considered a blizzard. But the winds must be 35 miles an hour or more, and you have to have a low visibility of less than a quarter of a mile. Yeah. Um, some of the main issues with winter storms are that you can lose power, lose heat, uh, trees and roofs can buckle under the pressure, and some more uh, some common blizzards that are known. Um, are back in 2008, which is the first one I remember, and some of you may remember the one in 1978. Specifically, my dad. Too. <laughs> the next hazard we're going to talk about is flash versus regular floods. So a flood is just an overflow of water onto normally dry land that can last days or weeks, versus a flash flood is caused by heavy or excessive rain and it lasts less than six hours. For example, uh, the 2022 Kentucky floods. Um, and then the next thing we're gonna talk about real quick are droughts. And there are three types of droughts, but we're gonna focus on meteorological droughts because this is a weather and storm chasing. Um, but it is a prolonged period of low rainfall leading to a shortage of water for example, one that's been on the news a lot is Lake Mead and the Hoover Dam. And the top are pictures from an aerial perspective of Lake Mead from 2001, 2021, and 2023. And, and then the bottom picture shows where it used to fall and where it falls now. And you can see the different colors in the sediments of the rocks. But uh, droughts are cyclonic, which means they come on and off throughout time. And since this isn't a desert, it's a common area that can get droughts. Now we're getting on to some more fun stuff. Uh, we get damaging winds, and I show you, I have a picture of the wind force scale that is used by the National Weather Service. And the first type are downbursts which is just a sudden downrush of cooled air during a thunderstorm. Uh, there are two types. Microbursts are up to two and a half miles long and 
days and last 15 minutes. Mac rivers are more than two and a half miles long and can last up to 30 minutes. Uh, this used to not be believed to be a thing until a man named Ted Fujita, who we'll talk about later too. He was a scientist who did studies on the bombing of Hiroshima, and based on that, when they, there was a plane crash, he saw the same patterns from the plane crash as he did from the bombing, and then he was able to do studies and found out that microbursts happen all the time. So a type of downburst is straight line winds, which is a common wind damage that we can get here in Ohio. It is a term used to define any thunderstorm wind that is not associated with rotation. And it's easy to tell the difference between straight line winds and tornadic winds because in a straight line wind damage, all this damage is going to be in one direction. While if there was a tornado, you would have many different directions of damage. So the next thing is a duration, which is another common thing we get here in Ohio, is a widespread long loop straight line windstorm that is associated with fast moving severe thunderstorms um, and I want you to look at this picture of this model because on the next side this is a video that I got from my front door of a duration that went through near my house and in this video you can see where it is light white slash gray that is the front line of the duration. And it is a big storm. Uh, for a while, we didn't know what it was, and so what was happening. We thought it could be a wall cloud or even a tornado based on that shape, if you look. But um, afterwards, the National Weather Service told us that it was a duration what we said in the video. How strong were the winds? The winds in the duration here were 85 miles an hour. And it caused a lot of damage near um, the refinery in Lima, where we're from. And it caused a lot of damage near some of our schools and the reservoir. And, and the last type of wind hazard are haboobs, which is a wall of death that is pushed along the fr front of a thunderstorm because of the downdraft. This happens when there is a drought in an area and all of the dust is just more easily picked up and moved. Now we're moving on to lightning, which is a lot more exciting than wind and droughts. But it is an electrical discharge through the atmosphere between two charged reason, regions, one positive and one negative. And here I have the four most common types of lightning. First ones are intracloud and intercloud. Intracloud all happens within one cloud, and an intercloud lightning bolt goes from one cloud to another. And here I have a video of one of the storm chases me, my dad, and my brother went on down in Marysville, Ohio. But here you can see that we were in front of four different supercells. And you can see both intra and inter of light. The next type is cloud to ground or ground to cloud. And um, that is when the lightning either goes from the ground to the cloud or cloud to ground. Here is a video from one of my friends, Max Olson, from um, Ground Cloud Lightning. And then over here, I have an example of Cloud to Ground. The last type of common lightning is air discharge, and 
this is an example of that, it is when the lightning goes from a cloud just to open air onto another cloud or object. And this is another slowdown video. And then here are So these are some rare types of lightning. The first type is ball lightning, which is shown down here. And then the rest of these are called transient luminous events. There are sprites, jets, elves, trolls, pixies, ghosts, and gnomes. So sprites and trolls are in red in color because it's an excited amount of nitrogen and these types of lightning can only be seen through like a camera. You can't actually see them with your eyes because of the color that they are. And I'm not gonna go too in depth at all of these, but these are some really cool lightning things and you can find a bunch of videos of these on YouTube from people. Yes, okay. So pixies are a small version of ball lightning and you can see in this picture you can get many of them at a time. Elves are when a lightning bolt goes out in a halo shape. So as you can see, it kind of looks like a space like an alien spaceship in a way. And then ghosts is when it, there's a lightning bolt, but you can't actually see the bolt, you just see like a Gnomes are just a smaller version of the jets. Yes. Um, I just had a question about like where your position is. Does that like do these all are these always kind of the same or does it kind of depend on where you're looking at it from? So sadly, none of these are actually my pictures. These are pictures of some of my storm chasing friends who allowed me to use them. But um, most of these will happen at the top of thunderstorms, which is why they're so hard to one C and two capture. Um, but a lot of these will happen around the same time. Like it's very common to have a gnome and trolls and pixies in the same storm. And it's very common to have jets and sprites in the same storm. So I think another follow up question to her is is that going to happen at the front when you're watching it come or after it passes? All the ones underneath are transient luminous events. All of those are considered those. Ball lightning is its own form of lightning and is actually the rarest type of lightning to capture. But that is just when there's such a big burst of energy, it just all at once and creates a ball instead of a bolt. And then, but these will usually happen on the back end of storms. So a lot of storm chasers will want to chase the front edge of the storm to see hail or tornadoes. Um, but there are some storm chasers that wait for the storm to pass so they can get the pictures of cool lightning like this. Um, if you want to learn about uh, rare lightning, Pecos Hank is a really good YouTuber who's a storm chaser who has a lot of videos of great storm chasing lightning. The next thing we're going to talk about is hail. Now, hail are just green drops that were sucked up into the updraft of a thunderstorm, and it kept going again and again and again because of conviction, convection. And uh, what that is, is there freezing cold air at the top of the thunderstorm, and there is warmer air near the ground. And based on just the air temperature, it rotates horizontally. Just like how if you're boiling a pot of water, you'll see bubbles coming to the top. That's because at the bottom it's warm, at the top it's cooler. So it's the same thing that happens when you're hitting. And then here are all the sizes of hail except that the National Weather Service considers the, uh, we have P size all the way up to the size of a CD or DVD, if you guys remember what those are. And then this is a picture of a hailstone from a hailstorm last year. Um, I believe this was a picture that Max Olson got. And 
document here I'm going to post. Um, and I'm going to show you a little video of Santa Hill's story. The tropical cyclones, depressions, storms, and hurricanes. And the only thing that differentiates them are wind speeds. Depressions have wind speeds of 23 to 38, uh, storms 39 to 73, and then hurricanes have their own scale that they are rated on called the Sonfer Simpson scale. And their speeds can go from 74 plus miles an hour to all the way up to 11. Plus. Um, you can have category one to five hurricanes, and hurricanes are not only created based on wind over the oceans, but also based on wave currents in the ocean that help direct the storm. And though we don't get hurricanes in Ohio, we still feel the effects of them. Uh, based on the path that they're traveling, we can get strong rain and wind storms after hurricanes. And here I'm going to show you some videos from the Hurricane Michael that happened in 2018. Uh, the first video is going to be... You're correct. So, the first video we're going to show you is the eye of the hurricane, which is known as the calm part of the storm. And with hurricanes, when you're in the eye, the big clouds that you can see that are the hurricane, uh, we call that the stadium effect. But keep in mind how slow that this is moving. And then here is a video of the actual cyclone. that is caused by hurricanes is not only wind, but also flood. Okay. Now we're getting on to the good stuff. My favorite tornadoes. This is personally what me and my dad love to go chase. Tornadoes are violently rotating columns of air that stem from a thunderstorm and are in contact with the ground. Um, so this picture over here is of the Pilger twin tornadoes that happened 2018? 17. Close enough. One of those. And then over here, this is a tornado that went through Indiana last fall. Um, yeah, okay. Tornadoes can be destroyed houses. Yes, tornadoes do leave big messes. That's, that, that's a fact. <laughs> from a video of Skip Talbots that show the different types of winds in a tornado. So this is the forward-facing downdraft, which is from the front end of the storm. This is the rear flank downdraft from the back of the storm. And then you have the updraft. And then when all these come together, it creates this thing called occlusion, where it starts rotating and then it forms the tornado. And then this area right here is called the clear slot. Um, this is usually one of the best views you get of a tornado, but it's also a very dangerous place to be while storm chasing because when you're there, you're close enough to the tornado that if it changes direction, you gotta have an escape plan. 
Now I'm going to show you a video of Reed Timmers of Andover, Kansas tornado from last year. This has been known as one of the best videos of a tornado ever. So he actually lost the drone that this was recorded on, and he just happened to find it when he got into town. Um, and luckily he did. You can see here in this video all the different vortices of the tornado. Um, and something that used to be thought is that tornadoes were just one vortice, but over time we get to s we have learned that there are multiple vortices that create a tornado. This is the on-ground view of the tornado. Um, and if you look, the tornado is all the way up there. No, and that's the classic funnel that you think of when you think of a tornado. And sometimes you can get a funnel cloud that's up in the sky, and you can't see if it's connecting on the ground, for sure. But if you get a rotating debris cloud, like down here, you're able to see. Yep, this is the all this part. Of the big black mass and you know, and it doesn't even look like there's any cloud attached to it. Yeah. It doesn't have a hole and then there's no side. Yeah. A lot of those that look like it's just one big cloud are actually called rain-wrapped tornadoes. And what happens is the rotation of the tornado actually pulls in the rain clouds. And so then the those are ones that are actually really hard to see. So, remember when I talked about Ted Pagina? Uh, he is known as Mr. Tornado, and he is the one who created the original Pagina scale that we use to rate tornadoes. And then in the early 2000s, it was changed to the enhanced Pagina scale to take into account uh, the new structural building codes. Number five is the worst. Um, it actually, Vegeta actually made the S go all the way up to 12, but anything past five was deemed unrealistic that could happen. But we're going to play a little game here. So on this side, we have two different tornadoes. So the top one, I want, what one do you think this was rated out of these options? also rated an EF3. So the top one is El Reno 2013 and the bottom one is Andover, Kansas 2023. Um, the, this is actually the tornado of the video we just watched. Now, it may seem crazy that both of these were rated the same, but tornado ratings don't account primarily on size, nor does it count on wind speed alone. It's based on the damage those tornadoes leave behind. So Andover went through a populated area with lots of buildings, so it had more things that it could do damage to. Well, El Reno happened mostly in like farmland where there's nothing there. But uh, radars indicated that there were 300 plus mile per hour winds in El Reno, the top one, and the National Weather Service is currently working on creating a new scale that takes into consideration both the radar indicated speeds and uh, damage that it created. So, 
So now I'm going to talk about specifically my storm chasing. Um, and these are all photos from different storm chases of mine. This first one was out in a town called Tabor, Kansas. This was my first big storm chase out in the plains, and it was my high school graduation gift. Um, and this is a shelf cloud that we got. We sadly didn't get to see the tornado. We drove away from this storm, and no joke, 10 minutes later, a tornado touched down. Um, and luckily, one of my friends got to see it, but we did not. This is called a rolling shelf cloud. So when a storm get, creates a structure like this, the shelf cloud will get horizontal rotation. And sometimes that rotation gets so strong that the shelf cloud just off the storm. It just rolls off on its own, and it'll keep going for miles and miles. And then this is a picture of a hail shaft. And you can see the green blue color in the storm. Uh, it's actually hail that creates that blue-green color that you get with really intense storms. And then up here at the top, this is the first tornado I ever got us to on my own. Um, I navigated us to it and got to it. This was in Texas, and I am about a mile away from the storm from where I took this picture. And with this storm, you cannot see it with your eyes. We were a mile away, and we could not tell that that was a tornado until we held up the camera to it. But that was in the city of Bellevue, Texas. That stopped it. And it ended up being rated an EF2. So I also storm chase a lot in Ohio, though we don't usually get big, beautiful storms like out west. Uh, we get a lot of small line storms, which are when all of the storms just come together and create one big line that goes through. Um, and then, when we get a tornado, we can get supercell ones, like Dayton, Memorial Day 2019, or this Union tornado in the, in, in the super outbreak. But most of the tornadoes that we get here in Ohio are called QLCS, which stands for Quasi Linear Convective System. So, this is an example of one that my dad accidentally got on his way home from work one day. And it is very hard to see, but right here there is a very small funnel cloud. And um, it did, the only thing it hit was a barn and it took a piece of the roof. So it was actually considered an EF0. And then, so this is not the same storm radar, but this is an example of what the radar will look like for QLCS storms. So it's not the natural shape that you think of, but right here, this is where the tornado would be in this storm. And it looks nothing like what you think of. Because when you think of a tornado radar image, you're going to more think, of the classic hook echo shape. Actually, every one of those lightning bolts is a confirmed lightning that hit the ground on the app that we use, radar scopes. But this is a screenshot of a Mississippi storm chase me and my dad went on in 2021. Um, now, this ended up being a really big rain wrapped mess, and that star is where we are. We're once again about a mile to two miles away from this tornado, but we could not see anything. Um, and there were a lot of trees, no southern roads, and one of my friends was on the other side of the storm, and he also did not get to see the tornado at all because it just became one rain wrapped mess. But these, this is a list of the radars and models that we use. We primarily use radar scope. College of DuPage and Pivotal Weather when we're out storm chasing. And we'll use more of the weather models when we are trying to predict where we're going to go. And yes. Yep. Well, you'd be surprised how large the storm chaser community is. And because everyone thinks we're like crazy for chasing storms, a lot of us are really close. But all the times the fun we're talking about is the same time, though. 
storm chasing, a lot of people think that it's just a, oh, there's a tornado on the radar. I'm going to go see it. Um, and sometimes you're lucky if you live out in like Texas or Kansas. But living in Ohio, if we want to see a tornado out of the plains, it can take up to a month's worth of planning. Um, we get the outlooks from the National Weather Service, and based on those, and then other models like the HRRR and photographs, we will decide if we think it's worth it to go out west. And then when we're there, we're constantly looking at radar, satellite, and constantly changing our plan. When you're storm chasing, nothing goes as the way you thought it was going to. And then here's a list of the equipment that I use personally when we go storm chasing. Um, unless you're lucky, you're going to need a car. <laughs> We use many types of cameras. One of them is up here that you can come up and look at if you want. Um, this is a video kit, what we use primarily for videos, along with our phone. We also have a still camera. We have a GoPro dash cam that are on most of the time while we're chasing, just in case there's a cool lightning bolt or we accidentally get a tornado that we didn't think we were gonna see. And of course, we use maps both on our phone and paper for directions, and to also have uh, knowledge of roadways that we can go through in case a tornado forms. And of course, we use our phones and computers for satellite and radar images, but we also use our phones to call in uh, weather. Uh, but we also use radios here to call in. You don't want to call them walkie-talkies. Some people get real mad about that. <laughs> These are handheld radios. Uh, me and my dad and my mom now are all certified ham operators. And with a ham radio license, we can call directly to the National Weather Service on these. And then this is a picture of me, my brother, and my dad, our very high class storm chasing team getting ready to go out west. So the most important thing with severe weather is being storm ready. So can I get a raise of how many of you have a tornado plan? Okay, we might need to have a talk about this stuff. <laughs> hey, that's a plan. Um, for a tornado, basically the plan is to get underground or into a, a very stable part of your house, mostly bathrooms, closets. Um, but we are going to talk real quick about weather watches, warnings, and uh, severe, like PBS situations. But does anyone here know the difference between a tornado watch versus a tornado warning? Purple shirt in the back. A tornado warning means a tornado has touched down in the area and everyone needs to get out. You're very close. And this is why some of it is very confusing for a lot of people. So a watch means that a storm could produce a tornado. Now, when you get a warning, it means that a radar indicated tornado has been uh, observed, which means that in the clouds, there's rotation, but nothing has been seen on the ground yet. And that's when people get confused. Now, if you hear a confirmed warning, that means that a trained storm spotter has seen and reported the tornado. Tornadoes or emergencies are very violent storms that are a threat to human life and to severe damage. And these are known in shorthand as a PDS, particularly dangerous situation. Now, I'm going to play you um, some examples of a thunderstorm watch, tornado warning, and a PDS warning. Do not get excited. No, nothing's going on here right now, okay? Um, but warning, I don't think the volume here is actually working, but, um, so for a thunderstorm watch, 
It'll do the like it does for all of them. Now, if you hear a watch, that just means you need to keep an eye on the weather. Uh, if you hear a warning, that means you need to re like evaluate your plan in case of severe weather, and you need to be ready to uh, execute that plan. Get in the basement. Emergency means you better get in your basement. Um, but um, tornado warnings have advanced a lot over the years. Um, tornado warnings used to be only about three minutes of warning time before the tornado hit the town that gave out the sirens. Um, nowadays, it is anywhere from five to 15, but the average is about 13 minutes. But there are some outliers, like in 2021, the Mayfield tornado. The people in Mayfield in the general area had a warning of about a week because um, it was labeled a very dangerous area. And so basically from Mississippi all the way to the edge of Indiana, there were like tornadoes are going to happen in this area sometime in the next week. And then the day of, they had up to an hour warning. So with storm chasers, uh, we can get the warnings out a lot faster, especially with long-lived, long-going tornadoes like the Quad State Supercell, which went for a total of 128 miles on the ground. But I need all of you to promise me one thing. When you hear a tornado watcher warning, you are going to listen, please. Um, yes, we'll go to the basement. Um, we have learned from sociologists that it takes somebody hearing five different times that there is a tornado on the ground before they will believe there is a tornado on the ground. But we've also learned that if a person will see a picture of said tornado, they'll believe it the first time they hear it, which is why storm chasers and storm spotters are important. You guys can, everyone in this room, if you wanted to, you can become a storm spotter. Because it is free, it takes an hour, and then you're educated on every type of weather that we can get here in Ohio. But the most important thing about severe weather and being storm prepared is learning, and you all guys now are storm prepared, I hope. But now we get to the fun part, because I can tell some of y'all are bored. But. <laughs> We are going to make our own tornadoes. So if everyone could come up here and grab a cup, and this is the adults can grab one too if they want. 